verse number 3 as our text for today. But we are going to read the whole chapter of Nehemiah, chapter number 6. Let us read this responsively. Now it came to pass when Sanballat and Tobiah and Gishem, the Arabian and the rest of our enemies heard that I had builded the wall and that there was no breach left therein, though at that time I had not set up the doors upon the gates. And I sent messengers unto them, saying, I am doing a great work, amen, so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease whilst I leave it and come down to you? Then sent Sanballat his servant unto me in like manner the fifth time with an open letter in his hand. And thou hast also appointed prophets to preach of thee at Jerusalem, saying, There is a king in Judah, and now shall it be reported to the king according to these words. Come now, therefore, and let us take counsel together. For they all made us afraid, saying, their hands shall be weakened from the work that it be not done. Now therefore, O God, strengthen my hands. And I said, should such a man as I flee, and who is the, there that being as I am would go into the temple to save his life, I will not go in. Therefore was he hired that I should be afraid and do so and sin, and that they might have matter for an evil report, that they might reproach me. So the wall was finished in the twenty and fifth day of the month Elul, in fifty and two days. Moreover, in those days, the nobles of Judah sent many letters unto Tobiah, and the letters of Tobiah came unto them. Altogether, also they reported his good deeds before me and uttered my words to him. And Tobiah sent letters to put me in fear. Father, bless us as we study your word. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, we're not going to study the whole chapter. We're just going to look at some uh, important events in chapter 6 and then look at several uh, verses in other chapters in order to uh, make a foundation for what we are going to study today. But I would like to uh, also deal on the practical side of uh, Nehemiah chapter 6, that meaning to say applying them in our time, applying them in the churches today, and applying them in our church. So we can see that since time immemorial, there is a spiritual battle going on. 
that spiritual battle will never stop until God completely has taken away sin from us or completely taken us away from sin and have completely dealt with sin and Satan and all of the enemies of the Christian faith. So when God established the church, the devil swore in his heart that he's going to do everything to destroy what the Lord Jesus Christ established here, he, here on earth. We can see that he personally tried to destroy uh, the uh, founder of the church and even offered him everything that he might think or a person might think that he wanted in exchange for Jesus bowing down to the devil. But of course, we know that the Lord Jesus Christ did not succumb to all the temptations that was thrown at him by the devil. Why? Because Jesus knew the word of God. Because Jesus is the living word of God. Amen. That is why the word of God is so important because it is our only offensive weapon that without which we cannot defeat our enemy, the devil. That is the importance of the word of God. Uh, and that is also the reason why in many churches today, the word of God is not important anymore. Pastor, how can you say that when every Sunday the pastor is opening the, the Bible and preaching from the word of God? They are opening the Bible and they are teaching something that may not be according to the word of God. Many pastors today will get a passage of scripture, close the Bible, and then tell stories about what they think or what they believe has something to do with the scripture. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible is the story of Jesus. It is not my story. It is not your story. It is the story of the Son of God who gave his life so that you and I will become rich in the sight of God. He became poor and with his stripes, the Bible says, we are healed. So we need to understand that there is a battle that is going on that will never stop. That's why when Jesus built the church, the devil also established counterfeit churches. That if you're going to look at many, many churches today, it is very hard to find a church that is really built by God or a church that came from the church that the Lord Jesus Christ built. Why? All of them are using the Bible. All of them are zealous in what they are doing. The truth of the matter is that they are actually more zealous than we are. There is a cult where members will never be late or they cannot enter the church. And they are a cult, meaning to say they are not teaching right doctrine and they are not even children of God. But look at the discipline that they are exemplifying in their lives. And here we are saying that we are the true children of God and yet we come late. And sometimes we do not even come to our services. So the irony of it. That's why if you are going to look at churches and judging by the way they live, you will be hard pressed to prove that we are the real church of God compared to what these churches are showing out in the open regarding their faith or what they believe. So if there is a spiritual battle, we are going to feel this corporately and personally. That is why you, you can see personal attacks in your life. You can see how the devil would want to destroy you. You can see how the devil would want to destruct you. You will see how the devil would want to uh, divert your attention. You will see how the devil will do everything so that you can be out of the place where God put you in order for you to become more effective, if not now, maybe later in your life. But he will do everything as long as he is certain that you are in the right church. Sabi nila, Pastor, kung tama tayo, bakit tayo magulo? Pag hindi tayo magulo, baka hindi tayo tama. Kasi, hindi mo naman laalabanan ng kakampi mo. Amen. 
Eh kung kakapitayin ng diablo, eh di nakaakbay siya sa atin. Sabi nga nung ano eh, ako po hindi ko pa nakasalubong ang diablo. Eh paano makakasalubong kaakbay mo? Sabi kayo naglalakad. But if you're doing what is right, believing what is right, living in the right way of God, then the devil will see to it that he will destroy whatever testimony you may have in the outside or testimony that you may have in your life. Kaya nga ang Diablo, sisirain niya rin yung paniniwala mo sa sarili mo eh. Paniniwala sa Diyos, paniniwala sa Church, paniniwala sa salita ng Diyos, paniniwala sa mga nagtuturo sa'yo, at paniniwala mo sa sarili mo. And once these are destroyed, then you will become ineffective in your life and you will be like a zombie Christian waiting for the day that the Lord will take you out of this world. So there is a, a what we call movement that is trying to hinder the work of the church. There is a phenomena, a phenomenon or things that are happening inside the church whose goal is to hinder the great work of God. And in this movement, there is what we call or are people who may not be willing participants, but they are part of that movement, maybe knowingly or unknowingly destroying or hindering the work of the Lord. And we need to look at it very carefully and try to identify it so that we will not be a part of that movement. Because as I have said, we may be a part of it unknowingly. Yun ang mahirap eh. Yung knowingly, at least alam mo. Amen. At dahil alam mo, malalaman din. At dahil malalaman din, magkakaalaman. Pero hindi mo alam. Kahit malaman ng iba, hindi mo pa rin aaminin. Bakit? Kasi hindi mo alam. At ang nakakatakot doon is meron kang magandang motive. Pero yung motive na yon, hindi mo alam. Yung pala yung ginagamit ng Diablo para ikaw ay ilayo sa kalooban ng Diyos. Kaya nga, sabi ng Diyos, be wise. Dapat meron tayong wisdom at meron tayong discernment in life. Marami kasi, tingnan natin dito sa ano, sa... I believe that's uh, Galatians chapter 5 and verse uh, number 7. Pwede ba tignan natin doon sandali, John? Galatians 5.7. Nangyari na noon yan eh. O tama, Galatians 5.7. Ye did run well. Who did? Who did? <laughs> who did? When you're dead, you cannot do anything. Amen? If you did, oh my! How can God use you if you did? Ah, uh, ba? Oh, ye did run well. Who did hinder you? Ayan, di ba? Who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? So there is, a, there is the possibility that we will stop. There is a possibility that we will not obey the truth anymore. Why? Because the truth is replaced with a lie. That is, we construed as truth. That's why we obey it. Because if you're a well-meaning Christian, you are going to be a well-meaning Christian. You are not going to be to, to have a bad conscience or a motive or uh, a, a, a bad uh, uh, attitude or things like this, but you will do things according to your what you call good motive. But as I have said, our sincerity is not enough. It must be according to the truth. But when you believe that a lie is a truth, then that's the danger. Because you're going to do it with enthusiasm, with all of your vigor and vitality, with much zealousness, but not according to righteousness. That's what the Apostle Paul says. Because he says, I was like that before. I am zeal. I am persecuting the church. But I was wrong. And praise God, he realized it. He got saved. And he worked with more zealousness in the Lord. 
than when he was still a Jew. So, Pastor, who are the people that may be hindering the church? Well, uh, I can say that they, they are not necessarily the gossipers in the church. Although gossipers can divide the church. Amen? Although gossipers can divide friendship and dismantle the unity of the church. So that is what gossip can do. But I don't believe that the gossipers are necessarily the main fronter when it comes to hindering. Of course, they can hinder, but in a degree, not that much compared to what we are going to study later on. Uh, what is gossip? Gossip is uh, telling things that you should not tell. Gossip is not necessarily falsehood. Because you can tell the truth. But you have no business telling the truth in a particular manner or in a particular way. Like for example in church discipline. We have public offense and we have private offense. When you make the private offense public, that is gossip. Understand? Why? Because you're disrupting the unity. You're destroying a person. If the thing can be settled privately, settle it. But when you make a private matter public, then you are disrupting the unity of the church and hindering the work of God. I read a, a, a very good example of gossip when uh, one, uh, a disgruntled member of a church tried to say things against his pastor. Some, most of them are not true and some may be true, but he spread it among members of the church and even people outside of the church. But then after a while, he got right with God and then was convicted to talk to his pastor and ask for forgiveness. And he said, Pastor, forgive me for all the uh, gossips that I've spread against you. Uh, when he asked for forgiveness, the pastor said that, I forgive you. He hugged the person and he said that, I forgive you. He said, Pastor, let me fix what I did. He said, son, come with me. And he took a piece of paper. He actually shred that paper after threading that paper, he even cut that paper into small pieces. And they went out in a windy afternoon. And he threw the paper, the shredded paper, uh, into the air. And it was carried by the wind in many different places. And then the pastor said, can you please collect all of those pieces, put them together because I need to use that paper. He said, pastor, that would be impossible. I may be able to gather all the pieces, which is very, very hard. I may have put it together, which is, again, very, very hard. But even though you cannot use it in a, a good way because it's already mangled and shredded and all of these things. He said, son, it is the same thing. I have forgiven you. I love you in the Lord. But you cannot undo what you have done. You have already destroyed my reputation. And there is really nothing that you can do about it. So next time, be careful about what you will say against other people. Why? Because, you, you see, once you said something, you cannot take it back. Even if you try to take it back, what entered into the mind of other people will remain there and will just wait for a chance to get out when some unfavorable circumstances happen between that person and the person that you have destroyed in the mind of that person. So that's why be careful. Amen? Let us be careful in saying things against other people except if these things are of public matter. So, not necessarily the gossipers, but of course it's good if we do not have any gossiper in the church. Amen? Amen. That would be a good uh, uh, church. Uh, not necessarily the complainers. Although, Complainers will annoy you. It will, uh, it will bring your temperature a notch higher because of their constant complaining. You see, there are church members that you will never be able to please no matter what you do. You may play 
to what they want, but there will still they will still find something that they will complain about. Maybe it's too cold in the church, or it's too hot in the church. The choir sings so loudly. The pastor uh, preaches along a message, and he's he's always shouting. Or the message is too short that I spend uh, uh, money to come to the church, and 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 that money is not uh, even worth to to spend for that kind of a message. Or the members are not friendly, etc., etc. And when you look at the mirror, I'm so old. They will always complain. You won't be able to please them no matter what you do. But that is part of the church. Sadly, there are people who will always complain. It's not good to have members who always complain, but they are not necessarily the main proponent that will hinder the work of the church. Not even the pretenders. You see, there are pretenders. You see, church people that are on the church attendance or church role, some of them can put on a mask that you think that they are a Christian every Sunday. But after that, Monday to Saturday, they live like the Word, they agree with the Word, they go with the Word because that is who they are, Word, but they are not the children of God. That's why there are pretenders in the church. There are those who think they are saved or there are those who know that they are not saved, but they are just going along with what is happening in the church. So of course, this is not good and they can disrupt our unity, but these pretenders may be controlled. Or later on, they will go out of the church. So we not need to worry that much against them. You teach the truth, they will not like it. You teach the Bible completely, they will not like it. So there are pretenders. And also there are what we call feelers. Those who depend on, they serve the Lord regarding on what they feel. If they feel like it, or if they don't feel like it, if they are in the mood, or if they are not in the mood to serve the Lord, if what uh, the pastor is asking them to do is something that they like, they will do it. If they do not like it, then they're not going to do it. So these are the feelers. They want to do the work of God their way, not the way of God. So these are not good groups or people in the church the gossipers, the complainers, the pretenders, the feelers, but the one that I'm talking about that can disrupt the ministry of the church are the quitters. The quitters. They can disrupt or hinder the great work of the church. These are the people who will stop serving God altogether and sadly and alarmingly, their numbers are jumping higher in almost every churches in the world. According to one survey, there are more quitters than those that are being added into the right church in our time. Of course, emerging church, ah, mabilis yan, marami yan. Kasi, emerging churches are basically church of the unsaved and for the unsaved. But for those who are teaching salvation, we have more quitters than those that are being added in the church. So quitters are hindering the church. Why do we have quitters and what are the reasons? Well, some have quit because of discouragement. When you got discouraged and you were not encouraged in time or you are discouraged but you did not disclose it but you carry it in your heart then time will come that you will just quit altogether and not attend the church anymore not only that but some have quit because they have been distracted their friends have distracted them their families have distracted them their own ambition have distracted them and maybe some Christians have distracted them in the church and this is so sad 
when you quit because of destruction. You are distracted. No, wala yung ano mo, focus mo sa ginagawa mo sa Panginoon. You see, anyway, we will elaborate this later. Elaborate on this later. Some people have been distracted because of, you see, material things of this world. That's, that's the reason why, why uh, Demas left Paul, having loved the present world, the material things of the world. So he left the Apostle Paul. Why? He was distracted. So he quit on the Apostle Paul. Just imagine the damage that he has done for the cause of Christ by leaving the Apostle Paul. We do not know what damage, but only eternity will reveal the kind of damage that he did when he left the Apostle Paul. Some uh, people quit because they have been disappointed. Disappointed sila. Uh, they're expecting something from the church and then all of a sudden they got disappointed. Why? Because it's not the kind of people who are looking at things that should be done for them, not the things that they should do for others. Yun yung disappointment eh. Naalala ko nga, sabi nung isa minsan, Naku, nakakatawa, pupunta ako dun sa Cambodia, ang pastor pala ron, si Pastor Madlang Awa. Tapos nung marinig ko, ay ganun lang pala. Disappointed. Eh, ba't mo i-expect sa akin ng spiritual growth mo? Gagawin kayo magagawa ko, pero hanggang dun lang ako. Tsaka isa pa, hindi naman ako nakikipagpagalingan. Kung pagalingan lang, edi eh, siyempre, papraktising ko yung ano, yung lahat ng magaling para humanga ka sa akin. But what can we get out of it? Because in the church, we should glorify God. Amen? Kasi madali naman mag-preach ng ano eh. Nang maganda eh. Madali naman mag-preach ng may alliteration eh. Madali naman mag-preach na yung emotion ng mga tao ay iyong ano, matatouch eh, may maha-heighten mo eh para humanga sila sa'yo. Madali naman mag-preach na paiyakin mo yung mga tao eh. Maganap ka lang ng mga kwentong nakakaawa. Maganap ka lang ng mga kwentong yung talagang uh, uh, yung, yung mga pinapalabas na patala sa, sa Thailand, yung, yung sa Jollibee, yung sa McDonald's. Abay, kwento mo lang yun! Talagang payakin mo to! Tapos patawanin mo to at the same time. Magsuot ka ng punit-punit na pantalon, nakalitaw yung ano mo, yung brief mo, habang nag-iiyakan at tatawa na naman dito. Tapos meron ka pang uh, plus, eh, ano yung ano, band aid na nakakurus na ganun. Madali lang yun eh. Kung talagang yun ang habol mo. But we are here not to impress people, but to glorify God. Yun yung pinag-uusapan. Kaya, pag disappointed ka, lahat ng taong disappointed, kasalanan mo, nag-expect kang masyado. Ang pinakamatinding disappointment, disappointed ka sa sarili mo. Alam nyo ba na marami ganun disappointed sila sa sarili nila. And because of that, they quit the ministry altogether. They're expecting something. I will become a member of this church and this is the, the result that I am looking for and it did not happen. They were disappointed and they leave the church altogether. You see, why, why does people quit, Pastor? Because this is the simplest thing to do. The simplest escape route that you can go on, that you can go in, that you think will solve all of your problems. Tino mo, magcreate ka ng pagkara, may ramy ng problema sa isang simbahan. Magquit ka lang, umalis ka lumi pa ka ng ibang church. Wala na yon. Akala mo, de ba? Akala mo, wala na yon. The easiest thing to do. Just quit. Distracted ka, quit ka na. Umalis na yung mahal mo, quit ka na. Oh, pinangmadali yun eh. Punta ka, kung saan siya pupunta? Oh. So, ibig sabihin, siya Diyos mo. Hindi ang Diyos. Ba't nakakalungkot eh? Magkaibigan kayo. Umalis yung kaibigan mo. Abi, aalis ka na rin. Why you're distracted by your friend? Question, are you serving your friend or are you serving God? Oh, hindi ba? Pero hindi ka naman aalis na ang dahilan mo kasi umalis yung kaibigan mo. Hahanap ka ng ibang dahilan. 
para acceptable sa church. Ano ba? Pastor, alis na po ako kasi umalis si Anu eh. Wala mo magsasabi nun eh. Pastor, alis na ako kasi meron po akong mas importanteng gagawin. O, oh, hindi ba? Para sa Diyos. Hmm. Pastor, alis ako kasi palagay ko kailangan na po ako ng aking bayan. Ang oh, bihira. Pastor, alis na ako. Kailangan na ako ng aking magulang. Olo pa sa din. Pero ang dahilan, distracted ka lang. Dahilan, disappointed ka lang. Ang dahilan, discouraged ka lang. Pero gagawa ka ng ibang dahilan para takpan mo yung tunay na dahilan because it is not palatable to the church. At ayaw mo na ma-disappoint sila sa'yo. Pero umalis ka dahil ikaw ay disappointed. So, ano ba yung hininto ang gawin ng mga quitters? Well, they quit witnessing for the Lord. They quit giving and offering to the work of God. They quit spending time with the Lord. They quit praying. And they quit going to church altogether. So these are some of the things that quitters are actually doing or have done in the church. They will quit those things that they have been doing. That is why it is very disrupting to the church. Tignan mo, halos kayong lahat may ministry. Umalis kayo, iniwan may ministry na yun. Ano di ba? May kapalit ba? May tindrain ka pa para pumalit. Kasi kadalasan sa atin, mga kapatid, makinig kayo ha, iniisip natin, sarili lang natin kapakanan. Matapos mong pakinabangan ang Diyos at sa church na yan, sa napakahabang panahon, one click lang. Hmm, iiwanan mo na. Hindi kay kinukulong sa simbahan, lalo na sa simbahang ito. Pero igalang mo simbahang ito dahil iginalang ka ng simbahang ito. Oh, hindi ba? Ganun eh. Ang nangyayari, kaya nakakalungkot. Hindi ka naman, tayo nga ang, umalis kang maayos, may letter ka. Tayo pa nga nag encourage nun. Pero wag mo naman, ihinder yung gawain ng church. Kasi hindi ka ba natutuwa, ginawa kang part ng Diyos sa gawain? Hindi ka natutuwa? Tutuwa ka dapat, amen? Yeah. Tapos, ganun, bigla mo nalang tatalikuran ng walang pakundangan. That's not good. Amen. Hindi yeah. maganda. And there are Christians who have quit believing God for revival. Ganyan sila hindi nawala sa Diyos. So when I talk about people who have quit working for the Lord and stop serving God, I'm not talking about the pretenders because the pretenders, even though they are serving, they are not actually serving God. Iba ang motibo niya ni. Eh. Iba yung ginagawa niya ni. Eh. At hindi naman recognize ng Diyos yung kanilang ginagawa. I am talking about Christians who are genuinely saved. Yung talagang saved. They really love the Lord. But somehow, somewhere, things got mixed up and messed up that they are now quitting or about to quit the ministry. So here in our text, we have Nehemiah. Nehemiah, among all the people during that time, have all the reasons to quit. But he did not. Amen. He had all the reasons to quit. Why? There was the attack from without. Anton si Sanbalat. Anton si Tobiah. <coughs> ano ginagawa? Ayaw siyang tigilan. Sinulatan siya apat na beses. May nagpapunta pa pang limang beses. Walang tigil! Hanggang sabi niya na, Lo! Humingi na siya ng tulong sa lolo niya. Ikaw ba naman ang... Ay, huwag tigilan. Ikaw ba naman yung hindi mag-aaraw uh, at nagtatrabaho ka, ginagawa mo para sa Panginoon. Eto mga taong to, walang tigil. There was the attack from without. Talagang tinetreten siya. Noong unang ginagawa nila yung wall, the first time that they're building the wall, they are being laughed at. 
and even some ballot and Dubai said if a fox will jump into that wall it will collapse altogether they're laughing at him you cannot do it you are nothing but then after just a few weeks they were able to complete the wall and these people were uh, troubled why they can see that it is not the work of man's hand but it is the work of God and whenever God works the enemy tremble why because they know that something good is going to happen so the devil will use anybody everybody all circumstances to discourage the people who is trying to do something good for for God kakita mong ginawa walang tigil siniraan pa siya ano pa sabi nagbabalak ka ng rebellion hindi ba nagbabalak ka ng rebellion kaya ka nag nire-rebuild mo yung wall para ikaw ang maging hari at magrebelde ka sa hari isusumbong ka namin sa hari hmm why? Because you're doing something good for God. That's why, ladies and gentlemen, when you decide to do something good for God, expect something bad to happen to you. Why? Because we have an enemy. If that is not happening to you, there is a question. You may be on the side of the enemy. So there was the attack from without, and there was the agony from within. People are complaining. People are getting discouraged. People are trying to, to tell him that, uh, is it worth it? Ano na mangyayari sa atin? Ano nangyayari sa atin? If they will attack, we will all die. If they will besiege us, we are going to uh, go hungry. People are complaining. Why? When you're doing something, there will be pressure inside the body. Diba? When we decide to fight for what is right, May mga nag-alsa dito sa loob at sinubukan pa tayong sirain. Why? Para sa isip niya kasi, kasi nagmamaro, marunong tayo, ilan lang tayo, kukunti tayo, akala mo kung sino tayo, makontento na lang tayo rito! And not do something for God anymore! Ladies and gentlemen, when God built the church, He said the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The church is built in order to go forward. The church is built in order to attack. We are to fight until we die. Amen. Yun yung pinapakita ng Panginoon. Sabi, hindi. Lumilit ang mundo natin. Dahil natin nakakaaway. Alam nga naman kaibiganin mo, kaaway. Kaaway nga eh. It is very hard to sleep with the enemy. Amen? Hard! Kita nyo ginawa rito, oh, mag-meet tayo. Di ba sabi sa kanya, binasa natin, mag-meet tayo. Ano gagawin? Papatayin lang siya. Oh. Ganyan ang kaaway. Sasabihin sa iyo, Hoy, lumapit ka. Kung gusto mo akong yakapin, ah, ba't kita pipigilin? Ah, di ba? Ganun yun. Palapitin ka. Oh, anong more? Aliga rito. Ikaw sa example. Oh. Ikaw pagkahihiyan, more ka mo. Di ba? O, oh, yun ang na, nangyari. Magkita tayo. Sabi pa nga sa temple pa eh. Hindi <laughs> ba? Pero anong gagawin? Papatayin lang siya. Why they hate you when you try to do what is right? And that is sad. It happens to Nehemiah. So he is the person who has all the reason to quit. But he said, I will not quit. I am going to do what God wants me to do. Why? Because it is always too soon. If we are going to quit. The work is almost finished. The Lord Jesus Christ is about to return. Why are we going to quit now? On God. Let us look in the life of Nehemiah. And see why in spite of all the things that he faced in life. He did not quit. Number one. He had a conviction. 
to accept the word, the work of God. He had a conviction to accept the work of God. Look at verse number 3, please. We will center on this. We will focus on verse number 3. And I sent messengers unto them saying, I am doing a great work. Amen. He says, I am doing a great work. Listen, this will help us understand that Nehemiah accepted the challenge to do the work of God. Listen to me. God will not force you to do his work. He's not going to shortchange you to do his work. He says, if any man will come after me, he says, you decide. This is the work that I want you to do. You decide. Are you going to do it or not? And Nehemiah accepted the challenge of the work of God. Yun yung maganda. Yun naglilingkod ka nang hindi ka pinilit. Kasi pag pinilit ka, magkukwit ka. Pag pinilit ka, titigil ka. Yan ang maganda. Pag yung kinagawa mo ay meron kang tamang motibo dahil pag ang motive mo iba at hindi nangyari, magkukwit ka. Ganun yun. Kaya maganda to. If you're serving God, you should not be forced to uh, serve God but it is your own personal conviction that you accepted the challenge that you are going to serve God. Why? So that no matter what happened, you will finish what you have started for God. Hindi siya pinilit, mga kapatid. Yung iba kasi, pinilit. Kaya pag nahirapan, quit. Hindi pa nga hirap, quit na eh. Pag nagka-problema, quit. Wala pa nga minsan problema. Magkukwit na yan. Why? Eh, napilitan lang eh. Pinwersa lang eh. Kaya kapatid, ano man ang gawin mo sa taong napilitan, hindi mo mapipilit yan. Ano man gising ang gawin mo sa nagtutulog-tulugan, hindi mo magigising yan. Bakit? Gising ni. Amen. So kaya ito tanong, narito ka, bakit? Napilitan po ako kasi sa hirap ng buhay ng aking mga magulang. Hmm. Napilitan po ako kasi sa pressure na kailangan kong kumita at tulungan ko ang aking pamilya. Pero hindi mo sasabihin yun. Ang sasabihin mo ito. Perfect po kasi meron ng trabaho, lalo tigit, meron pang ministry. Galing, ano? Sabi nga ni Rizon, di ba? Oh. Galing naman ang dahilan natin eh. Pag in-interview mo eh, nakachat mo eh, kasi po, answered prayer, meron na pong ministry, which is higit sa lahat, Tapos meron pang bonus, trabaho. Ang galing mo, perfect. Makakapanumbalik na ako sa Diyos. Napilitan ka kasi. At pinangatawanan mo na. Na even though you hear the word of God, that even though the word of God is preached in such a way that the Holy Spirit is convicting you that what is more important is the ministry than your job, you do not want to believe the word of God and keep on rejecting. And your action shows that your priority is what you can get for yourself, not how you can glorify God. Okay, tamo? Dadabog pa kayo? Tanggapin nyo na lang. Ay, ay si Mrs. pala yun. Sorry. Padabog-dabog pa kayo. Ay, ba, muti po, muti. <laughs> o, oh, di ba? Yan sinasabi ko sa inyo eh. You must know when to stop. Yan. <laughs> For your good health. <laughs> eh, minsan, dapat matalino ka. 
Amen. Kasi, dito sa Nehemiah chapter 1, 1 to 4. Ito nangyari. Walang pumilit kay Nehemiah, mga kapatid eh. Dito mo, Nehemiah chapter 1, verses 1 to 4. The words of Nehemiah, the son of Hakaliah, and it came to pass in the month Chislu, in the 20th year, as I was in Shushan, the palace, that Hanani, one of the brethren, came, he and certain men of Judah, and I asked them concerning the Jews that had escaped, which were left of the captivity, and concerning Jerusalem. Kasi concern siya eh. Puso niya yun eh. Ando ng kanyang puso. And they said unto me, the remnant that are left of the captivity there in the province are in great affliction and reproach. Hirap na hirap sila, inaalipusta. Hindi lang sila hirap ha. Inaalipusta, pinagtatawanan ni Lolo, binubuli. Why? The wall of Jerusalem also is broken down kasi pag wala kang wall, ay labas-pasok ang mga tao. Para ba may bahay ka? Walang wall. Hindiyan <laughs> mo. Misa may lasang pa-uwi, dadaan sa loob. <laughs> eh, walang wall eh. Malay nila na bahay mo yun. Ay, hindi ba? Walang wall. At alam naman natin, during the, old, uh, the, the olden times, wall speaks of protection. It speaks of defense. It speaks of uh, your, uh, what you call, uh, sovereignty and all of these things. So walls are very, very important. Also, it's broken down. And the gates thereof are burned with fire. Verse number four. And it came to pass when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned certain days and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. Walang pumilit sa kanya. Narinig niya. Napagtanto niya. Nagkaroon siya ng burden. Umiyak siya. Sabi nga, na, nag-mourn siya. At pagkatapos, lumapit siya sa Panginoong Diyos. Hindi siya pinirit ng Diyos. Di ba? Kaya nga, minsan, ang hirap na nagre-recruit eh. Makakapagdahilan eh. Pero, pag Kristiyano, gustong gusto mo kasi sasabihin nila, Kung hindi lang mo may ministry, hindi ako pupunta dyan eh. Diba? Tama, mali. Tama. Pero those are empty words. Empty words. Nasabi lang kasi walang masabi. Tsaka syempre, matinding pogi points yun. Syempre, mga Kristiyano yung mag-hire sa'yo, narinig na ang priority mo ministry, abay, ting! ganun na ganyan yun. Ito ang kailangan natin. ba? Kaya kita nyo, kahit nung ini-interview kayo, balubaloktot ang English, okay lang, matetrain yan. Kasi, ang mga Kristiyano, may teachable spirit. Yun tayo umahawak eh, mga kapatid. Doon ay nahawakan natin eh. Kaya kahit ano pa yung Kristiyano na yun, at least Kristiyano siya, lamang na may Holy Spirit sa puso kesa sa wala. Kaya lang, duma, nag, pumapasok yung disappointment. Kasalanan na rin natin. Nag-expect tayo. Minsan, natetem ka mag-quit pero hindi dapat. Sige, tuloy lang. Ganyan dapat natin gawin. And hoping that people will realize. So motive is very important. Why? Because your motive Will, reveal, will be revealed in your action. Ganun yun. Yung motibo mo talaga, kahit ano pa sabihin mo, lilitaw yan sa action mo. Pag ang motibo mo, halimbawa, yaman, pag may pagkakataong yumaman, hindi ka magdadalawang isip. Yun naman talaga motibo mo eh. Ayan. Kung may, mapabayaan mo man na ministry, it doesn't matter. Because that's not my priority. This is my motive. Ganun yung kapatid. Kaya gano'n mo man katagal itago, lilitaw yun. Because opportunity will present itself. So, ibig sabihin, Pastor, lahat, pag kami mas malaking kita, pinunta namin, gano'n kami. No. Dapat intindihin nyo. Kasi minsan ang problema nyo, 
Agad yung iniisip na, tinitira ako ni Pastor. Hindi. May tinuturo sa Bible sa atin. Ito yun. Okay. Kung ang pagpunta mo o pagtanggap mo, hindi pinag-uusapan yung mas malaki kita o hindi, o mas mahirap na trabaho o hindi. Ang pinag-uusapan, ano yung gagawin mo sa priority mo na sinabi mo ministry? Maaapektuhan ba o hindi? Yun ang point doon. Eh, ito nga ano ko dahil tatay na ito eh. Bigyan mo itong trabaho mas malaki kita. Hmm. Nangahak na yan ng ano eh. Nang Facebook eh. Biro mo nakita-kita ko na lang sabi ni Maribel, how cute is my granddaughter? Kanya sagot ko na yung matrikulo mo sa college. Terrible yung buhay ito. Tuwan-tuwa si Esther. Sabi nila, hindi, si Jong yan. Sabi niya, that's si Life Fox. Kanya. <laughs> o, isipin nyo. Kukunin yan. Pero titiyakin ko. Hindi niya mapapabayaan yung choir. Hindi niya mapapabayaan yung pagpipris niya. Hindi niya mapapabayaan yung pag-aaral niya. Walang problema. Sa totoo nga, nag-apply yan sa ano eh. Ano sa ka nag-apply nun? Jay, Preach Card Academy. Nauna pa nag-apply sa'yo yan, baka akala mo. Oh. Yung motibo mo, tignan mo. Huwag kang magalit pag may ganitong klase ng preaching kasi chine-check yung motive mo. Baka maunawaan mo sa Word of God. At kung tama ka, tuloy nang wala kang iniisip. At kung mali ka, tigil! Para wala kang isipin. Yun yung point dito, mga kapatid. Hindi tayo magkakalaban. Lalo na ako, hindi nyo ako kalaban. Ano ba naman mapapala kung labanan ko kayo? Oh. Amen. Sasabihin ko lang. Sasabihin lang natin. Pakikita lang natin. Yun yung pinag-uusapan doon. Hmm. See? Sabi ko ni. Chapter 2, 1 and 2. Ang sabi rito, oh, And it came to pass in the month Nisan. O, oh, kita mo? Nagpunta, nag-isimula sa, sa Shushan, sa Chislu, China yon. Eto, Nisan, Japan na. Magta-travel din siya eh. Oh. In the 20th year of Artaxerxes, nagkasakit pa siya. Sumakit ang chan. Sabi kasi nung ano nagbasa yung isa, Alka-Seltzer ka niya eh. <laughs> Artaxerxes, the king. That wine was before him, and I took up the wine and gave it unto the king. Now I had not been before time sad in his presence. Masaya siyang tao, masiyahin, butler siya. At pag nagseserve siya, lagi siyang may kasiyahan. Kasi papatayin ka ng hari. May alam, talagang ako may question din kay Nehemiah eh. Ba't nagsaserve ka ng wine? Sa hari, pero yun yung kalagayan niya nun. Tuloy natin. Hindi ko nasabi mag-serve kayo, ha? Two. Wherefore the king said unto me, Why is thy countenance sad, seeing thou art not sick? This is nothing else but sorrow of the heart. Then I was very sore afraid. Why? Pwede siyang papatay. Alam niyo ba sa hari, bawal humarap ng malungkot. Yung si Esther, naalala niyo, yung, yung, yung asawa bago si Esther, Di ba, yung, yung magandang asawa, uh, dahil sa uh, hindi maganda yung pinakita niya sa hari, inalis siya. Pwede ka ipapatay. Kaya takot na takot siya. Pero if we will continue reading, he had favor with the king. Why? Because God honors the desire of his heart. Amen. Makinig ka kapatid. May mga goal ka sa buhay. May mga gusto kang matulungan alam ng Diyos. Huwag mong ipagpapalit ang gawain niya at ang bayan niya at ang mga tao niya. Gagawa ang Diyos ng paraan para mapunuan niyan sa ibang kaparaanan kesa sa paraang iniisip mo. Alam mo nangyari nung payagan siya, sabi pa sige, manguwa ka ng kahoy, magpapadala pa ako ng gwardiya. Isipin mo yun. 
Very unusual. Bakit nangyari? Because Nehemiah loved his people. Nehemiah loved God. And if you will love God, and if you will love the church of God, hindi ba gagawa ng paraan ng Diyos para mangyari yung desire ng puso mo na hindi naman taliwas sa gusto niya sa paraan ng Panginoong Diyos. Isa lang gusto ko nung maligtas ako, maligtas ang lola ko. Yun lang ang gusto ko nun. Lahat ginagawa ko, maluwalati ang Diyos, at laging sa puso ko, sa isip ko, maligtas ang lola ko. Bago siya namatay. Yung last night niya sa mundong ito, niligtas siya ng Panginoong Diyos. Gumawa siya ng paraan. Why? God will honor our hearts if we are going to serve Him with our, with conviction. Kasi pag naglingkod ka na may conviction, walang makakatinag sa'yo. Kahit anong offer pa. At kung hindi rin lang yun promotion, hindi ka matitinag. Hindi ko sinabing maging stationary ka. God will move you according to His will. But the will of God is according to His glory. Not simply the fulfillment of your desire. Pangalawa lang yung kaya nga sabi, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Yung mga gusto mo, dagdag yun dahil inuna mo yung kingdom of God. Pero pag inuna mo yung dagdag, bawa sa iyo yung kingdom of God. Yun ang mawawala. Yun ang nakakalungkot. So, he had the conviction to accept the work of God. What kind of conviction? Number one, it is a personal conviction. Sabi niya sa verse 3, I am doing. Amen? Question, what are you doing? Hmm. Mayroon magkaroon ng conviction pag wala kang ginagawa. I am doing nothing. And I will continue to do so. <laughs> Hindi ba mahirap yun? Dapat may ginagawa ka. Sabi niya, I am doing. Everybody had a job and a position to fill in the body which is the church. What part are you fulfilling or filling in the church of God? Ano yung lugar na nilulugaran mo, ginagawa mo sa church, hindi pwedeng wala. Hindi ka nilagay ng Diyos na balakubak. Na walang ginagawa kundi pakatihin ng ulo. Hindi ka pigsa, nasisilipin sa bote. Hindi ka anan, na kaitim-itim mo, may maputi ka. Hindi ka uh, kurikong, na kung saan-saan tumutubot, walang ginagawa kundi katihin. Kamutin pala katihin. Kamutin dahil makati. Ano yung lugar mo sa church? Dapat meron. Amen. Dahil kung wala, baka hindi ka safe. Dahil ang safe, lalagyan ng Diyos na member ng body. Eto ngayon, ikaw yung mata. Hmm. Galingan mo tumingin. Amen. Focus mo yung tingin. Pero, sabi mo, may ibang gusto ang Diyos sa akin. Aalis ako. May kapalit ba yung mata? Huwag mo naman bulagi ng katawan. Amen? Because you are doing it. And you are the only one who can do it. If God is trying to move you, God will say to it that somebody will take that place and it is your responsibility to have somebody there before you leave that place. And you will be leaving because God is promoting you. Ako niya ibig sabihin. Dapat maintindihan natin yun. Huwag kang makasarili, kapatid. Meron siyang personal conviction. Meron siyang ginagawa. Everybody had to do something and take a position. You see, while they were building, uh, rebuilding the wall, they were scattered. Some have, uh, some are there watching. They have weapons trying to defend the wall and some have tools working they are building and they are battling but towards one goal. Mga kapatid, hindi tayong lahat 
ay pupunta ng Pilipinas o pupunta sa mga churches at magpipreach ng katotohanan o against dun sa mali. Pero lahat nagpe-pray ng power para ma-achieve yung goal. Iba-ibang ways pero towards one goal. That is what we're trying to say. That's why I'm telling you that what's important is you know what you're doing. And no matter even if I criticize you, your pastor, even if I criticize you, but you are doing something towards the goal, keep on doing it because God knows. Kasi baka minsan overzealous ako. Gusto ko lahat tayo makipaglaban. Pero ang ginawa ng Diyos, ikaw yung tagabantay. Taga, taga, taga tingin, taga panalangin, taga supply ng pangangailangan. Hindi ko nakita. Pero yun ang inilagay ng Diyos sa puso mo. Keep on doing that. Don't be disappointed. Why? Because you know that what you're doing is according to God's will. Ganun yun mga kapatid. At kung makakusahan ka, magsalita ka. Pastor, araw at gabi, walang tigil, pinapanalangin ko po na gamitin kayo ng Diyos na sa ganun mamulat po sa katotohanan ng mata ng maraming mga mana ng palataya. Yun po yung ministering nilagay ng Diyos sa aking puso. Oh, alam naman sabihin ko, tigilan mo yan! Hindi. Hindi, hindi ko pati tigilan. Sasabihin ko sa'yo, salamat kapatid, ipagpatuloy mo yan kung madadagdagan mo pa, salamat. Di ba? Ganun lang naman yan eh. Wala naman magagalit sa'yo ng ginagawa mo para sa ikatutupad ng goal na hindi naman taluwa sa kalooban ng Diyos. There are many ways to serve God. Merong nasa front line at meron namang nasa, ga, nasa ano, garrison para protektahan nila yung mga naiwan na pamilya ron. Naalala niyo si David, nung umatake lahat ng lalaki, walang naiwan, niloko lang pala sila, umikot yung mga kalaban, kinuwa lahat ng asawa, hindi ba gusto siyang pagbabatuhin? Oh. Eh, pero kung may naiwan doon, o di hindi sana nangyari yon. Sometimes, forgive us, sometimes we are overzealous. Please try to understand. Because our motive is to glorify God and our motive is to, to have the church united in serving the Lord the way we see it. We are humans. We commit mistakes. So sometimes, please try to understand. Every Christian has a personal responsibility in the work of God. Because we all have a calling. You may be rich. You may be poor. You may be tall, you may be short, you may be altogether lovely or altogether ugly, you may be uh, educated or not educated, you may be black, you may be white, it doesn't matter who you are. If you're a child of God, God has something for you to do in His ministry. Amen. So God does not leave anyone out when it comes to His work. Every child of God is important in the work of God. Why? Because your work is a personal job. I am doing. Nehemiah said. Amen? Kaya mga kapatid, mahal mo ba ang church? Dapat mahalin natin. No matter how imperfect our church is, we need to love it. Alam, minsan nakakasakit sa puso. Ako, this, I cannot imagine this in my life. And I will never imagine this because I could not imagine it. Kung ano man yun, hindi ko na maintindihan. Hindi mangyayari kailan naman na may titira sa bubong ng aking tahanan na hindi mag aattend ng church. Never. Narinig nyo? Hindi ako papaya kahit kailan na may titira sa ilalim ng bubong ng bahay ko o ng inuupahan ko o ng kinukontrol ko o minamanis ko na hindi aate ng church ko. Bakit naniniwala ko ng church ko ay sa Diyos at ang bawat tao na makakasalamuha ko at meron akong karapatan. Gagamitin ko influensya para makita nila kung anong ginagawa ng Diyos sa church ko. Hmm. E eh, pastor, kung ayaw, papaalisin ko. Sobra ka naman po. Ikaw man sobra. Siguro kaya ayaw, wala kang patoto sa kanya, hindi kanya pinaniniwalaan. Oh. Bakit ayaw? Tumira nga sa inyo eh. Hindi naman kanya, pero ano, kayo nakikitira. Oh. Pinsan ko. Umatend. 
Yung nagpunta sa amin. Si Nancy yung nagpunta rito, umatin. Backslider si Nancy yung magpunta rito. May pinatira ba kami dyan hindi umatin? Hindi pwede. Ayaw mo umatin, huwag ka rito. Hindi pwede. Sorry. Magalit ka nang gusto magalit. Hindi pwede. Oh. Hindi pwede. Oh. Ako si Blue, na-appreciate ko. Dumating mga kamag-anak niya rito, pinaatin niya. And to be honest, minsan naiinip na talaga sila. Kita mo naman kasi sa mukha, hindi mo naman maikaila. Oh. Si Tito, talagang minsan eh, gumagano na siya eh. Oh. Pero atin sila, bakit? Nakatira sila kay Blue eh. Oh. Tapos pag hindi sila umatan, yari sa akin si Blue. Sabi ko, Pampiro, anong ano influensya meron ko sa kanila? Tinutulungan mo, tapos gaganyanin ka? Bahwag. Eh, pagkakabira nga tayo magka-influensya sa tao, meron na tayong pagkakataon, pababayaan pa natin. Oh, di ba? Oh. Sometimes it is hard to understand what is understandable. Hirap. Hirap. Kaya, kaya ang pastor, kontrabide eh. Hindi niyo napapansin kung ba't nagiging kontrabida, Pastor? Kamang ka ngayon, may, may mga hindi nakakaramdam ng magandang pakiramdam. Kontrabida, siyempre, Pastor. Kaya ka nakaramdam ng ganyan dahil sa Pastor eh. Hmm. Bakit pati yun? Hindi mo itanong, bakit nga naman hindi ko gawin? Ano ba ba? Kaibigan, nakikita ka dito sa amin, pabor ko sa'yo. Hindi mo ba ako mapagbibigyan atin ka sa church? Minsan lang. Subukan mo, makinig ka. Ay, hindi, ayoko. Nakikitira lang ako. Saan mo nakakita ang taong ganun? Oh. Pero nila ako sabihin niyang, kilala naman kita, ipokrito kayo, tapos iimbitahan mo ako. Huwag naman. Oh, yung wala kang magagawa ron. Alam niya kahit ikaw, hindi totoo eh. Alam niya kahit ikaw, umaaten ka lang kasi nakikinabang ka eh. Alam niya yun, kaya hindi mo siya pwedeng pilitin. Pera na lang kung ganun. Eh kung hindi naman ganun, bakit? I am doing. What are you doing? Number two. He had a commitment in achieving the work of God. Pero bago yun, nakalimutan ko yung pangalawa. Kasi na-distract ako. Ayan, ito na. He had a powerful conviction. Sabi niya, I am doing, ano kasunod? A great work. See? Ano bang attitude mo sa ginagawa mo? Yung nagtuturo ka ng bata, ano ba yon? Is that a great work? Kasi pag great work yun, bigay todo ka. Pero bata lang naman ang tinuturuan ko. Wala. Outreach, is that a great work? Kasi kung great work yun, pag-aandaan mo, pupunta ka lagi. Pero kung hindi, konting sakit lang ng ulo, konting inconvenience, hindi ka napupunta. Are you attending a great church? Ano attitude mo sa church na to? Kumpara sa So-so lang itong church. Eh di so-so ka. Ikaw yung church eh. At kung so-so itong church na to, at alam mo pala kung paano magiging great, ba't di mo ginagawa? So what is your attitude? He has a great conviction. Para sa kanya, yung pag-build ng wall ay hindi basta-basta. Lahat ginawa niya. May kaklase nga ako sa Bible school. Pagka magcha-chapel hour kami every Wednesday. Mamamalansya na yon pagkatapos ang uling paplansya niya yung perang iyo offering niya. 10 piso. Sabi ko ano ka ba kasi ng kuryente pinaplansya mo pa. Sabi niya bakit? Gusto ko kanya kasi gusto ko pag bibigay ko sa Panginoon the best kanya. Okay, wala akong magagawa ano, para sa kanya yung ino-offer niya. Kailangan hindi, sabi ko, sampung piso pa rin yan, kahit lukot yan, kahit na hindi, it doesn't matter. Para sa kanya, gusto kong ibigay sa Diyos, hindi lukot. Ngayon, gusto mo lukot, di ibigay mo. Ang pagkakaiba, attitude ng giving. Yung amount, pareho eh. Pero yung kanyang attitude, great ito para sa Diyos. And I'm going to make, see to it that the best is being given to God. 
Ganun yun. Kaya anong attitude? Kaya, alam mo, kaya nalilate ka? Hindi naman great ang church sa'yo eh. Kaya uma-absent-absent ka? Hindi naman great ang church sa'yo. Ang church sa'yo, inaatinan lang. Something na aaten ka lang. Sabi ka nung isa ng ating itinuwalag, isang sinabi niya, ay, ang pagkakaalam ko, ang church, umaaten ka lang eh. Mali pala ipinunta ko, kaya niya. Eh kaya, no wonder, it doesn't matter, wala, wala mang epekto yun eh. Kahit isang libong beses pang itiwalag, sabi niya, eh ano. Pero yung taong may pagmamahal sa Diyos, at natiwalag, habang hindi na magkakaroon ng kapayapa niya, habang buhay hanggat di siya nanunumbalik sa Panginoon. Bakit? Mahalaga sa Kanya eh. Pero sa mga walang halaga, wala lang yun. Wala lang yung sisirahain pa nga niya, pinanggalingan niya. Bakit? Hindi mo mahalaga sa kanila eh. So ang tanong, gano'ng kahalaga sa iyo ang church na to? Kaya kung hindi mahalaga, kapatid, spare mo naman tong simbahan. Hayaan mo naman na matira na lang yung mga binibigyan ng pagpapahalaga. Kung ayaw mo na bigyan ng pagpapahalaga ang simbahan ito, Wag naman. An- an- ano ba ito yung simbahang ito? He purchased with his own blood. He purchased with his own blood. Pinabaliwala mo yung katawang binili ni Kristo ng kanyang dugo. It is the pillar and the ground of the truth. Pinabaliwala mo yung kung saan nilagay ng Diyos yung kanyang katotohanan. It is the institution of uh, and the incubator of mission in the world. Pinabaliwala mo yung nagtatayo ng mga simbahan na katulad ng tinayo ng Panginoon. Wag! 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 Sabi nga, no! 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 Huwag mong kaganunin. It is our privilege to be a part of building and expanding the kingdom of God. So let us do it with all of our best and it will only happen if you are not forced or begged to do the work of God. Kasi mga kapatid, huwag kang magalit, ano? magalit ka na pala. Meron kasi talagang nanggagamit lang ng simbahan. Meron talagang ginagamit lang ang simbahan. Meron talaga. Kung ikaw yon, pwede ba iwanan mo na kami? parang awa mo na. Ayan, nagmamakaawa na ako. Huwag naman. Amen. Yung naghihintay ka lang ng break, dito muna ako hanggat dumating yung break ko. Hindi naman ito showbiz eh. Napa-extra-extra ka muna, dakilang extra sa buong mundo, si Bitoy, hanggang magkaroon ka ng break. Huwag naman ganun. Kaya nga noon, yung mga umaaten dito. Honest naman sila eh. Actually, si Marlene, she was honest. Sabi niya, Pastor, talagang ang goal ko ho, Canada. Pero dito muna ako. Di ba, kapatid? Kamag-anak mo si ano, Marlene, di ba? Pero ano, pinipreach ko, huwag niyong gawin yung stepping stone nito, kako. Hanggang naririto kayo, bigay niyo ang the best ninyo. Isipin niyo, dito lang talaga kayo at hindi sa ampa. Kasi pag ginawa niyo, iniinsulto niyo to, Huwag naman. Huwag mong gawing, huwag mong gawing dormat, huwag mong gawing tapakan. Pag narito ka, italaga mong narito ka na habang buhay unless God promote you to another place. Ganun dapat ang attitude. Eh, parang nasa UAAP ka o kaya NCAA sa Amerika. Gagamitin ko lang ano to para sa NBA talaga ang goal ko. So kapag ka may, mag, may bantay na ano, hindi ko na ilay-lay up, ititira ko na lang, para baka mapilay ako, hindi na ako re-rebound masyado. Huwag naman ganun, kawawa naman yung team na sina, sin, sinalihan mo, nagpapakamatay. Kaya nga pa naglalaro tayo ng basketball, hindi yung madalas makita, dalas disappointed ako. Ako na nga yung 55 anyos, ako yung takbo ng takbo, tapos itong mga 20 anyos, 30 anyos na to, nanonood, hindi makapag-box out, Puro dahilan, sumasakit ang ano, may dala pang ano yun, dala mo? White flower. <laughs> ano, 
Pag binantayan ko si Jun, pag binantayan ako ni Jun, talagang kikita nyo naman kung paano kami dalawa. Oh. Kaya madidevelop na kami niyan. Eh. <laughs> Matindi relasyon namin sa korte. Eh. Banggaan kami niyan ha. Buti na lang, parang mga ano lang kami, kama na. Tumatalbog-talbog. Oh. Great, powerful conviction, amen? Number two, he had a commitment in achieving the work of God. Sabi niya, I am doing. Sabi niya, a great work. Sabi niya, so that I cannot come down. Ano yun? Commitment in the work. If you are committed, nothing can make you stop the work. Sabi niya, nung dahil lang, bakit titigilan ko to? Ang ganda ng ginagawa ko. Ang dakila ng ginagawa ko. Ang importante ng ginagawa ko. Hindi nyo ako mapapababa dyan. I will not stop doing the work of God. Why? Kaya ngayon na nakakalungkot sa mga pastor na politiko. They do not believe that they are doing a great work. Ayong bumaba, pumasok sa politiko. Ayong bumaba, pumasok sa business na sila ang nagmamanage. Walang masama mag-business. Huwag mong ibigay ang time mo ron. Kung may, mag, mabawa, nilagay mo ang pera mo sa banko, kumikita, o oh, just wala kang ginagawa. Hindi ikaw mismo hands-on sa business. Ang dahil mong dapat i-prepare sa preaching at ipanalangin ng mga member, nagawa ka pa ng ice candy. Abay, wag na. Sino ba sa gawa? <laughs> Nah, hindi. Hindi naman kayo, Pastor. Eh. <laughs> ano, bra- brownies. <laughs> ano lang naman kayo, once every month and a half. Eh. <laughs> Pag Pastor na kayo, wag na. <laughs> Pagawa mo na sa iba. O, ganun. Hindi ba? Sabi niya, I cannot come down. <laughs> he was threatened, but he didn't quit. He was threatened. Papatayin daw siya. Nagpadala ng letters. Apat na beses, nagpadala ng threat, galit sila, nagsalita sila ng laban sa kanya, nagsinungaling laban sa kanya, anong sabi niya? I answer them the same matter. The same manner that I am doing a great work so that I cannot come down. Wala akong ano. Importante ito, makintay kayo. Kung gusto niyo ako makausap, makintay kayo. Kung meron gusto kayo ipagawa, may ginagawa ako, pero kahit maghintay kayo, bababa lang ako pagtapos na. At pagtapos na, nasa langit na ako nun. So doon tayo makita kung ligtas kayo. Yung sinasabi ni Nehemiah, I'm not going to, to stop doing this. Why will the work cease? Sabi niya, bakit titigil? Dahil tinatakot niyo ako, no? Takutin niyo na ako matagal na akong takot. Tuloy ang gagawin ko. Amen? Number two, he was tired but he didn't quit. Kasi diligent worker si Nehemiah. Palagay ko, pagod na siya. Palagay ko, nanghina na rin siya. Palagay ko, nasaktan na rin siya. Palagay ko, worn out and burn out na rin siya. But he did not stop. Why? He's doing a great work. Ano sabi niya sa chapter 6 verse 9? 8 and 9 please, tignan natin. Ang ganda ng ano niya rito eh. Ginawa at sinabi niya eh. 8 and 9. 6-8. Ayaw niya? Nag-quit na. Then I sent unto him, saying, There are no such things done as sayest, but thou feignest them out of thine own heart. Wala akong sinasabi. Inimbento mo lang yan. Pero verse, uh, sa, sa 9, sabi niya, For they all made us afraid, saying, Their hands shall be weakened from the work. Mangina yung mga yan. Hindi nila kakayanin yan. That it be not done. Now therefore he said, O God, Strengthen my hands. Oh, hindi ko kaya. Pero kanya, kaya to ng Diyos. Amen? Kaya itong laban natin o ginagawa natin, nagtitiwala tayo sa Panginoong Diyos. Amen? Hindi sa anumang sirkomstansya, hindi man sa alakas natin, hindi sa opposition na ating hinaharap. It doesn't matter what situation we are in. We will continue serving God. Wala naman akong, alam niyo, wala pa ako narinig na nagpatutuon na tinawag ng Diyos na sinabi niyang, kapag ka po itong mga requirements ko na ito ay nangyari at saka ako palang paglilikuran ng Diyos. Patuloy ako maglilingkod if there is no trouble. 
Patuloy ako maglilingkod sa Diyos if there is no problem. Patuloy ako maglilingkod sa Diyos kapag ka lahat ay smooth. Wala naman nagsabing ganun eh. Ano sinabi mo? I surrender my life to God and I am going to keep serving God until I die. Tama? Pero nung may trouble, huminto ka. Nung may problem, huminto ka. Nung may opportunity, huminto ka. Nung hindi na pabor sa iyo ang nangyayari, tumigil ka. But Nehemiah did not. Every circumstance is unfavorable unto him. But he did not quit. Why? Because he knew that God will never quit on him. Sabi na nga ng Diyos, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Eh ano pang problema? Bakit tayo titigil? Bakit tayo bababa sa ginagawa natin sa Panginoong Diyos? Yes, we are tired, we're weary, we're hurting, but we're not going to go down. Because we're doing a good work. And the work is almost finished. Mga kapatid, sandali na lang. Sandali na lang. Papalik na ang Panginoon. Why do we have to quit? And lastly, he had a choice about accomplishing the work of God. May choice. Habang ginagawa niya, sabi niya, why should the work cease? I am doing a great work that I cannot come down or why should the work cease? So we can see that he did not give up because of the enormity, uh, uh, the, the uh, hugeness of the job. He did not give in to the enemies threatening him. He did not give out to the circumstances that are very hard. So the question now is this. Why would you quit? Why? Meron nagpaalam sa isang pastor. Sabi niya, pastor, gusto ko nang mag-quit. Ganun ba kanya? Sige kanya, kausapan mo nanay mo, ang tatay mo, mga kapatid mo, mga kaibigan mo, ang church, tumayo ka sa linggo. Sabi mo sa kanilang lahat na gusto mo nang mag-quit at sabi mo sa kanila ako ng dahilan. Pag nagawa mo yan, kanya, mag-quit ka na. Mag-quit ka na. Sabi mo yung tunay na dahilan. Hindi niya magawa. Alam mo kung bakit? There is no reasonable reason to quit on God. Walang katanggap-tanggap na rason para talikuran ang ginagawa mo sa Diyos. Wala. Pero lahat ng rason ay tama sa pagpapatuloy ng paglilingkod mo sa Diyos. So, Pastor, how can I quit? You don't quit. You will be promoted. Niyintindihan niyo ba? Hindi ka magkukwit. Ipopromote ka. Pwedeng mawala rito si Brother Rilson. Pero magiging pastor siya sa isang lugar dito o sa Pilipinas o sa amang bansa. Pwedeng mawala ang mga preacher natin dito pero hindi sila nag-quit. They were promoted at pwede ka mawala rito. Pero hindi dahil nag-quit ka kasi pre-promote ka. Naintindihan nyo ba? Promote. Ang ibig sabihin ng promote na ilagay ka sa mas magandang spiritual na kalagayan kesa sa kalagayan mo ngayon. Hindi ayon sa sarili mong assessment. Ayon sa katotohanan ng Biblia yun ang dahilan para mawala ka rito. Pero other than that, you are just a quitter. And you are going to hinder the work of the Lord. And God will see to it when you face Him at the judgment seat. That work will be burned with fire. Because you did not do it for God. You only did it for yourself. Father, help us, Lord, to see the truth.